Want ridiculous naked sport bike performance for around $20,000, about the price of a clapped out Camry? These three bikes deliver. We're back here at the Cycle World offices after multiple days of testing these three bikes. I'm sitting here with Bradley Adams. What are your thoughts on uh, our day's testing and getting these three awesome bikes out on the road? I'm bummed it's over. I mean, these are three incredible motorcycles, man. I had so much fun. Uh, it's really nice to get back here into the office, though, and, and go over all the numbers and compare notes because some things we agree on and maybe some things we didn't. So the reason that we have two shootouts is that we have an Aprilia, a KTM, and a Yamaha that hover in the $20,000 range. We also asked Ducati for the best Street Fighter that they have, which is the SP2, and BMW's M1000R is their top of the line version of that motorcycle. So we basically have five bikes, a whole array of prices, but we put them into two different categories just to make it a little more, more comparable when you looked at the pricing. So in the winner take all final story, we'll determine can one of these $20,000 motorcycles keep up with the really expensive BMW and Ducati and hold its own on the track and on the street? I'm gonna start by saying I'm a fan of the KTM. After riding the KTM, we were like, man, this bike isn't really based on a super bike that its company made. It was designed as a street bike. And everything about that bike sends you that way. This engine is just the most fun on the street as a pure street bike. It's the biggest engine of the whole group. It's 1,301 cc's. It's comparable to the Aprilia on power, but it has by far the most torque, like yeah. 10 oh, pound yeah. feet. And then you look at the Aprilia, which is a little bit more balanced, but one thing that we kept going back to is that the Aprilia is so close to the RSV4 that it's based on. And when you ride that bike, just the way the engine makes its power, it seems like a track focused bike. Everything about how that engine is making its power and where it's good and how it has a little bit more top end. It all kind of makes sense as a track bike. Then you look at the Yamaha and, and you know, to be fair, the Yamaha is based on an R1, right? So Somewhat older generation right. R1 engine. I mean, it's still cross-plane crank engine, but yep. they've made some updates in 2020, I think, to the R1, whereas this one has all the hardware from the, the previous gen R1, right. right? So And so our expectations are, you know, okay, it's R1 based and we have this mental picture of what that should be. But to be fair, in typical Japanese fashion, this bike is, the engine's dumbed down a little bit. To be straight up, it's not in the same league, yeah. horsepower wise, yeah. as the other two bikes, yeah. where, you know, the KTM made 157 horsepower, the Aprilia 154, and then the Yamaha is a full 20 behind the Aprilia. So that's a big difference, but the Yamaha has some really nice redeeming qualities as well. The biggest thing there about the Yamaha, okay, the Yamaha is a little bit down. That being said, the Yamaha is a gem of an engine in the fact that it's so smooth. So if you're using this bike for commuting, you're not doing track days, you're not going up into the canyons every weekend and really looking for that top end peak power, you've got an engine that's really smooth, very little vibrations, you're not feeling vibrations through the handlebars or the foot pegs or anything like that. So it makes it a really enjoyable platform and at the same time you do still have it, it's r1 base right. so you have decent power i think it's what, 135 horsepower yeah. so there's still plenty of power i should say with the aprilia and the yamaha again that kind of super bike derived power plant you get that kind of split personality syndrome where they don't quite have that bottom end grunt that the ktm has and they're a lot more focused on high-end performance or i should say higher rpm performance so right at that mid-range, uh, you kind of have this spike in power, and then they kind of rip from there. But around town, you kind of want a little bit more of that bottom end grunt that you get on the KTM. I think an example there is riding the Aprilia, riding it around town, you almost have to actually slip the clutch a little bit from yeah. leaving a stoplight, right? Because it is a little bit mellow down low, and then the throttle on that is a little bit numb, somewhat of an electronics thing, but you looking at it as a package, and it's, it's surprising you have all this power, but you sometimes in the case of the Yamaha and the Aprilia, you do want a little bit more of that down low. The KTM is literally an, an uppercut the second you touch the throttle. It's got so much bottom end torque. The torque is so flat that it doesn't matter if you're at 2,000 RPM or 4,000 RPM, 
it's gonna give you a wallop of torque the second you crack the throttle, and it's got a very direct throttle response compared to, say, the Aprilia. As we said, on the street, the KTM likes to go into a tight hairpin and just be throttled out, yeah. whereas the Aprilia and the Yamaha, they wanna carry that corner speed and so that you're already in the mid-range yeah. and you're not coming out of a slow corner at a low RPM and then trying to get the, the horsepower to catch up or the torque to catch up. And, and so they're really different characteristics. So we could go for hours about everything we do like about this engine, but you know everyone's gonna say they wanna know what we disliked. And there are a few things. I know I've got a couple in mind. What do you think about each of the engines? Any, any downfalls in them? I think we've mentioned it a little bit. The Aprilia, we both noticed that there was just a little bit of numbness at the throttle, which leaves a little bit of a, a shadow of doubt in your mind when you're mid-corner and trying to get on the gas. The only other thing I would like to add to that, it does seem to run a little bit hotter than the other bikes. Engine heat seems to transfer through the frame a little bit more, and so it kind of retains the heat yeah, more than it, the and other it was bikes. coming up underneath the seat a bit and making the seat actually right. very hot at times during the day. So moving on to the KTM, it definitely doesn't seem to have that free revving spirit up top. So it's definitely like a low end mid range bike. You're gonna ride it there. The only other thing about that, it does seem to have a little bit more vibrations than the other two. I think that was the only kind of thing that I noticed about the KTM power plant that I didn't totally love. Yeah, for sure, I, I, I would agree with that. And then, so what do you think about the Yamaha as far as negatives? Do you have things that you disliked about that bike? I think the only thing on the Yamaha, and it's, it's just the nature of an inline four, it's a little bit wider. So I think what you get from that bike is, it, it's just a little bit wider at the knees. Again, though, I think that is a nature of that inline four. Yeah, I agree. I think if you really start nitpicking, each of these engines have some little things that we could pick at a little bit, but in the grand scheme of things, they're all really nice engines. Now, that being said, all of these points about the engine, you've made some really good points that the electronics are almost just as important, right? Correct. You have this amazing KTM engine that really needs to be tamed by electronics, but if you want KTM's full electronics <laughs> package, you have to spend an extra $999. Yep. Yep. It's starting to become more commonplace where you have to add on this electronics package to get the full thing out of it. Would you want that bike without the tech pack and the track pack? I couldn't imagine riding that bike without being able to turn wheelie control off, for example. Right. You know, but it still is a little bit that user experience and how much you're able to adjust the bike, whether it's on the fly, whether you've got to jump into a sub menu. And to that point, Yamaha has done a phenomenal job, right? Right. I mean, one thing that we discovered right away is that on the Yamaha dash, which is the smallest and the most dated looking dash mm -hmm. of the three motorcycles, but it does have one attribute that we all used where you can literally have certain rider aids on a lower menu. You can tab over to them really easily in a non-distracting way while you're riding and you can adjust your suspension, not the specifics of that, but you can change suspension modes. You can change certain other power and throttle response settings on the fly, and it's just a couple button clicks away, and the other bikes don't give you that sort of freedom in such an intuitive way. So. It definitely seems easier to bounce between settings. You can kind of do it on each of the bikes on the fly, but for sure the Yamaha, it's the most immediate when you want to make those changes. On the other hand, the Aprilia, this is again where you see that race bike roots. There are so many things that you can adjust on the Aprilia. It just seems like a very programmable motorcycle. And I think the one thing I liked about that is they've got it set up where they've got a race mode and a road mode. Mm -hmm. And so then you've got three riding modes in race and you've got three riding modes in road. So you can kind of tailor that bike a little bit more toward the experience. If you're going and doing a track day, you go in that race mode and you've got your, your three modes. You can adjust two of them in road. You can adjust, you can build one custom mode. One thing that we always forget as we're testing is that most people who are gonna buy these bikes, right? They're gonna have to have a steep learning curve initially learn how to use their bike, sit down with the owner's manual a little yeah, bit, or yeah. sit down and really get yeah. into the weeds and figure out how they do it. But after a little bit of experimentation, they'll probably set up a couple of modes to their preference and then maybe leave that stuff alone. We both agreed that the KTM, I think that that was a really intuitive menu system. It's not as complicated. You can't get in the weeds as much as you can on the Aprilia. Right. So go into right. the KTM a little bit and tell us about 
Yeah, uh, you know, I think the, the thing about the KTM, there's a couple things that are frustrating just because you're adding on the additional software packages. For instance, I think it's track and performance mode. You know, you've got to go back into a sub menu to adjust out of those. Other than that, every time we'd put a new rider on that bike, it seemed like those were the electronics that was easiest for them, the most intuitive for them, that they could also navigate through the menu and understand what was going on. So, and there's some other things that KTM has done where it's got another drop down menu with info that you can uh, basically hide. So you can right. remove it from the screen, you can pull it back up, and that's And then you can toggle that one too to change some of your, your basic mm -hmm. information like your trip, temperature, and your fuel, and some of those right. things, which you may not want displayed all the time, but you in one button click, you can pull that up. If we're just talking electronics, the big key points here, the KTM, super frustrating that you have to add the additional software packages. Once you do, it's brilliant, it's got everything you need. The Aprilia, it is a race bike <laughs> system yeah. that's been you know, pulled over into the Tuono package. So a lot of adjustability. And the Yamaha, surprisingly good for how small the display is and relatively outdated those systems are at this point. So we talked earlier about how different these engines are and how that affects the performance. The chassis are a little bit different too, although I know you've been delving into the numbers and you found some interesting stuff with that, right? The thing that I looked at first was, these bikes all weigh almost identical. They're within seven pounds of each other, mm. which I found really interesting. The KTM has the longest wheelbase. It's over 58 inches. Well, the Yamaha and the Aprilia have really similar wheelbases and really similar front end geometry. What did you think? Because when we were on the, on the roads, they kind of give you a, a completely different impression. Yeah, KTM and the Aprilia are like worlds apart in terms of handling. The KTM is so agile but it's so agile in a way that it almost feels a little bit too much. Steering side to side is so quick, but then sometimes it's a little bit on edge where if you hit a bump mid corner or something like that, you get this twitch to it. Even cruising down the freeway, I was just started commuting on that bike a couple days in a row, and you'll be cruising down the freeway and you'll hit a seam or something and it just starts shaking. And it's the opposite with the Aprilia, which is so stable, you can hardly knock that thing off of a line. And I think you notice that in the canyons, right? How planted the thing is once it's on the side of its tire. Yeah, I think it has a little bit lazier geometry, but the benefit of that is once you flick it into the side, it is on rails. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. there is nothing that can upset that bike. It yeah. just feels planted. It may take a little bit more bar pressure, counter steering to get it set, but once it's there, it's locked on rails. And like you said with the KTM, the KTM is very interesting because it's got that instant throttle response. It's got a big dollop of torque. And then you take that front end and you hit a, a bump mid corner and it's lively. Yeah. So you're working. But then at one point later in our test, we were on an, a billiard table smooth road. It was amazing. Yeah. But why don't you tell us what your thoughts were on the Yamaha? Because we've not discussed that. And the Yamaha, chassis-wise, has some really nice attributes. It's sneaky good. You feel that development from the R1. You know, it's actually funny because it's more agile than the Aprilia, but it's also, you know, more stable than the KTM. So it is that real happy middle ground. I think the thing about the Yamaha is overall it stands. You sit a little bit more upright. The handlebar feels a little bit taller. You're not as rocked over on that bike. So you're not attacking corners in the same way. You have a chassis underneath of you that is fully capable of going about just as fast as you really want to go. So I almost have no qualms with the Yamaha chassis. I think it's actually a really good handling bike. A couple other things, you know, with the KTM that I did want to touch on, it feels a little bit like they wanted to build a bike that is fun. It's spirited, tons of character. And so that twitchiness almost plays into a little bit. If you are a guy who's going canyon riding all the time, going and doing track days, that might frustrate you a little bit because you want that stability of the Aprilia and even in, of the Yamaha. But again, it's I think it's a little bit just understanding what's right for you, that personality. I think if you want to just have a bike that's tons of character and tons of fun, maybe the KTM is the right direction. The Aprilia is a better handling package though, I would say. So let's segue into the suspension because I think one of the keys to these three bikes as far as the chassis go 
are the electronic suspension. And so we've got the Yamaha and the Aprilia that both have the Olin's EC 2.0 software and have the Olin's um, hardware. Then we've got the KTM with the WP house stuff. It's got a bigger fork. It's got a 48 millimeter compared to the 43 on the other. So it's a stout fork. And it's funny yeah. that you, we don't have to overly think the suspension <laughs> yeah. anymore. Yeah. You can kind of let the bike do what you want, but yeah. you can also go in and play with it, right? We, we all win here. Like we, we win. Thank you to all the manufacturers who have developed this stuff. And it makes the bike so much more flexible, whether or not if you're cruising down the highway, you toggle over to your automatic mode and you've got that kind of plushness to it. And then once you get up into the canyons, you maybe either toggle over into a more aggressive automatic mode, or in a lot of cases, I would just go to a manual mode. I noticed that in the automatic modes on the Yamaha, I could feel a little bit more movement. It wasn't a very consistent feel. So I would toggle over to the manual modes and that gave me the stability that I really wanted. It's just not quite as aggressive as the other bikes. The KTM is pretty middle ground. I think WP's done a phenomenal job. Talking about the KTM, the one thing that I played with a little bit, which, you know, I can see the purpose of it was the anti-dive. Mm, and, yep. you know, the anti-dive is interesting because you've got this feature that you can keep the front end from diving under braking and entering corners. And on a smooth road, it's great. But on one of the rougher roads that we went on, man, it, it made the ride really, really harsh. But I think one thing that, that I think you would agree with that I take away from this is that you don't have to compromise anymore with the suspension. Now you can do it from the dash in a minute yeah. and make the bike whatever you want it to be wherever. Yeah. And I guess what we should say is that there is so much adjustment in each of these bikes. Uh, the KTM maybe a little bit less. Aprilia does a really good job. One thing I do want to give them kudos for is that they've got the standard settings listed on the screen. So if you want to go back, you can go right back to that standard setting because it's yeah, right there. Yeah, you're not so. completely in the weeds. You have a, an instant reference. And it's interesting mm -hmm. because the Yamaha has the same Olean suspension, but you don't necessarily know what that base is. But I think the bottom line is these bikes are infinitely adjustable. <laughs> you can find your happy, spot and live with it. You can change those at any point. You can do so many things, but it's really not compromised. But I think the next thing that we have to talk about is the brakes, because all of these bikes are top tier bikes for these manufacturers. And the brakes are really different. No, absolutely. Definitely some differences there. And sorry to Yamaha fans, but the brakes on the MT-10 are seriously lackluster. Sure, there's power. You're gonna get the thing slowed down, but it does not have the feel and performance that the, the brakes on the KTM and the Aprilia does. You agree? Yeah, the Aprilia, you've got that initial feel and you instantly know where you're at and it builds progressively from there. That the initial bite is really good. The, the KTM, the initial bite is, well, it's not even a bite, it's that pull of the lever. It's just a touch mushy through that first little bit of the pull and then you get into the meat of the power and then it's got very similar performance to the yeah. Aprilia but the Aprilia, the immediacy of brake performance is amazing. So just to recap on chassis, I think we all agree the Aprilia is the most confidence inspiring. We'll just call it at that, right? Yeah. Engine, chassis, electronics, but a big thing on this is ergos. People are getting a naked bike because there's some comfort right there, that, you know, the upright seating position and all that, but some differences between each of these bikes, right? One thing that we discussed, you take an RSV4 and you turn it into a naked bike, which is what the Tuono is, but you still get the RSV4 riding position. A little bit. Yeah, you've got your upright handlebar, but the triangle between your lower extremities, it's got high rear sets, a seat that slopes into the tank mm -hmm. to get you up over the front as yep. if it was a sport bike. Yep. That's for sure the, the most aggressive seating position of the three bikes. But then talk about the Yamaha because it's the exact opposite, right? It, it yeah. almost doesn't even feel like a sport bike in some ways. Yeah, I feel like a big touring bike, very comfortable, very relaxed. I think that one definitely offers the most relaxed ergonomics. Somewhat related to that, I don't want to skip too far ahead, but probably the best wind protection uh, on the Yamaha. You got that little bikini fairing. The Aprilia does a pretty good job there too. Going back to the KTM, the one thing I do like about the KTM is the seat is very flat. So you have that room to kind of move around. The one thing that KTM has done with the Super Duke, they've put some really interesting handlebars, but it's very low and it drops down at the ends. They've done that for the guys that are going to the track and you know, it makes a difference when you're hanging off and, and drop your elbow down and stuff like that. But what that does do a little bit is it puts a little bit more weight in your wrists. The one thing I will say about the KTM though, 
is all those angular lines on the front of that thing with the headlight the way it is and then having that dash there, it actually creates a little bit of turbulence. Now to the Yamaha, I will say it is the most comfortable in terms of rider triangle, but the seat is the thinnest and most firm on that bike. Which is so, interesting. It seems yeah. counterintuitive. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't, I mean, that's an easy thing to swap out if you are spending long miles on that thing. So Yamaha, most comfortable. KTM, a very close second. And there's no doubt that the Aprilia is the most aggressive. All right, so we got through all the big stuff that the people want to know, engine, chassis, electronics, but there are more things to these bikes that are going to make them stand out or important for the people who are buying them, right? So what do you got? Things you like, things you may didn't, maybe didn't like. So Prilia has the largest fuel tank, but it gets the worst fuel mileage on average. So if you're somebody that's commuting, maybe not the best, or something to consider at least. Right, right? I mean, definitely something to consider. I, yep. I mean, the, the fuel mileage was definitely a factor, especially when you're in a group ride. Yep. We wish that the Aprilia had an adjustable clutch lever yep. with the span. That would have been nice. But overall, that's a great package. The Yamaha, you've got a couple things that you liked and didn't like, so why don't you yeah. tell us about those? Yeah, I think the one thing that I noticed on the Yamaha is having the 12 volt power port up near the handlebar. I just think that's so in line with that bike because it does feel like a bike that you could almost go touring on. One thing I disliked about the Yamaha is the mirrors. It's got these really short mirror stocks to it. So at least in my case, I'm basically just seeing my elbows or shoulders. So those are the two things that stood out on the Yamaha for me. Yeah, I think uh, one thing that we all agreed on was the KTM's quick shifter, by far the yep. best timed. It was crisp, it was predictable. The feel at the actual foot lever was kind of what you wanted it to be. Did you have any other things about the KTM that you thought in particular? I love the clutch lever on that thing. You know, having or just uh, having the hydraulic clutch may or may not have been doing wheelies during our ride, and that clutch was super consistent, and then riding around town, just a really nice, solid feel to it. You knew exactly what you were getting from that lever every time. So. All of that being said, obviously there are strong points and weak points to each of these bikes. One of them has to come out on top. I think you know the answer. What is it? I think in this scenario, the choice is the Aprilia. If you look at every single thing about the Aprilia, it's got a fantastic engine, it's got a really planted chassis, but we also had another consideration to take into account, and that's we're talking about putting these up against the, the two new bikes from Ducati and BMW, and what bike out of these three is going to be the best contender to yeah. go up against those to kind of prove our point of can a $20,000 bike compete against these more expensive hyper hyper nakeds. Yeah. But I think when you take into account the overall street performance, the engine performance, the chassis performance, what is the most balanced across all of those different attributes, I think that the Prilly is the bike. It is what you expect from a hyper naked. In some regards, we both have a soft spot for the KTM. Yeah. So I think the KTM, unfortunately in this case, comes in second, but as a street bike that you're gonna just use on a regular basis to go and ride canyon roads and commute on and do a little bit of everything, it is exciting. It's fun, it's got a great engine, it's got a lively chassis, it's got probably the most beautiful looking dash and easy intuitive, but it tired you out sometimes. It was so aggressive and a little bit more difficult to ride and not quite as composed in some situations that maybe that wouldn't translate to track days as nice right. and some of those things. And then there's the Yamaha. And then there's which, the Yamaha. If you're, if you're someone who kind of wants that middle ground between just a standard naked bike and a hyper naked, it does fill a nice void there. And you know, if you're primarily going to be doing highway miles and things like that, you know, maybe that is a good option. But I, I definitely agree with you in terms of outright performance. That Aprilia is, is tough to beat. And we'll see what it can do up against the, the BMW and, uh, you know, the, the Ducati. Yeah, it's going to be a tall task for, for anything to go up against those bikes, but I think we picked the right bike to go in into that second part of the test and, and see if it can hold its own. And there you have it. The winner of the first part of our Hyper Naked Shootout is the 2023 Aprilia Tuono V4 Factory. For the full story, go over to cycleworld.com for all the facts and figures. And if you like what you're seeing, please subscribe, like, and comment. Thanks for watching.